Hi, and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell, and joining me today is Bram Singh, CEO of BDX. Bram, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Barb. <laughs> lovely yeah, seeing you again after PTC, I guess. Yes, it was a couple months ago, a few months ago now that we, we saw each other uh, in Honolulu at PTC, and wow, a lot's <laughs> happened in the world since then. And, uh, yes. You know, just before we get into so many of your great updates, it would be, you know, I think our listeners would be interested to hear just how you've been managing uh, your headquartered in Hong Kong, so close to to where uh, the COVID um, story began. Uh, so just how have you been and, and how have you been managing through? Hong Kong has weathered it. Hong Kong is, you know, has had experience from the SARS days. So people have been extremely responsible. Uh, we've kept the fatalities here minimal. Um, and uh, the, the real outcome here, Barb, has been that not just in Hong Kong, but in countries across the globe, data centers are now a critical facility, for, not just for my customers, but for the country because of the huge uptick in, in, in um, internet traffic and in, uh, 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 and the way customers have, are now uh, sweating their IT infrastructure so it's been, it's been, it's been busy. The, uh, while you know, people are in, uh, under almost like house arrest, we have been extremely busy in keeping these facilities running and in getting new facilities on board to meet this huge uptick in IT demand. Yeah, you certainly have been busy. Uh, we've, had, we've heard lots of news from you already this year. And just this week, you announced a new... Um, data center uh, expansion in Singapore, the acquisition of the Telstra data center. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, it was a textbook uh, win-win, Barb. Uh, Telstra found data centers to be a distraction from their core um, business, which is um, uh, running a global network. Uh, so they were divesting their data center assets. At the same time, they had to be extremely careful um, because they have a large footprint in these data centers, so they just can't give it willy-nilly, sell it the highest bidder. We, on the other hand, have been earning a reputation to uh, take t such data center assets from telcos and beef them up, um, make them more efficient, connect them back to our global operating platform, effect economies of scale, and make life easier more cost effective and more convenient for the customers there. So I guess our reputation preceded us. Telstra and us had a you know, meeting of the minds and it was a very, it, it was a wonderful win-win uh, for both sides. And, you know, two friends came together and they sold the asset to us and they're still there as, uh, in, 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 the, in the data center and it's, it's been wonderful, yes. It's been a good, this was a good transaction. That's great, yeah. Well, and Singapore is, is a pretty key market globally uh, in terms of data centers. Can you talk about how, you know, how, what this means in terms of the strategic role that this may play uh, for BDX? Singapore is the third largest uh, data center hub in the world. For us not to be there made absolutely no sense. So when, when my colleagues, when they check out a city, uh, for its contribution to digital transformation. They look at a variety of um, indicators. They look at the, the internet traffic to and fro. They look at uh, the cloud connectivity and whether it's just being used for games or is it being used for actual commercial transactions and people are really sweating the assets in the cloud uh, in that location. They also look at the, the um, subsea cable connectivity, the fiber connectivity into that city. And in all those indicators, Singapore is off the charts. So for us, uh, not, have, not being in Singapore wa was, was, uh, was not acceptable, not something we would want. And then of course our customers, they were pushing us there. So it was natural that we would go there and not just take this facility, but we plan to also acquire some more there. Right, yeah, so that was gonna be my next question. Do you have further plans in this facility or as well as others? in Singapore? Okay, so like I said, you know, when we bring in a facility, we 
connect it back to the global platform. We affect economies of scale. We soup it up. We do, we change its design. We work on its weaknesses. Um, and it's, that's quite a tedious job. Telstra's facility, however, has been remarkably efficient. And they ran a good ship. We've had a minimal uh, uh, headaches. And our work has been so much easier co-opting this facility into our global cluster. We are focusing, therefore, just on expansion. When it comes to this particular facility at Paya Labar in Singapore, all we are focusing on is how do we build out two more floors, bring in more power, and fit, out, fit it out for the customers who are hankering to get in there. So that is as far as this facility goes. As far as Singapore goes, we need one more location at least in Singapore, and we are hunting, we're looking out. So if you know anything, let me know. <laughs> okay. Um, and so just to sort of come back to BDX and, and the offerings, which we would call it your signature offerings, uh, really. So those would be, you know, the BDX Armor, the single pane uh, solution, the federated SDN. Can you talk about how those specifically will help enterprises that are looking to expand into Southeast Asia? Sure. So they specifically help enterprises um, through their digital transformation, right? So let me explain. So my guys, they've got three keys, they call it. So key number one is the BDX armor. What does this do? This gives a protective coating across the uh, customer's IT infrastructure. Doesn't have to be on our location. It can be in a BDX data center. It can be in a third party data center. It can be in the public cloud. And as long as he's my customer, we then protect this whole infrastructure of his under BDX armor. The second key. The second key is what you mentioned as the federated SDN. So what does this do? These are these, we have these APIs hanging from every one of our data center. Any carrier can come to the Singapore data center, the one in Nanjing, the one in Guangzhou, the one in Hong Kong, and simply connect into our in-house SDN and then become part of our connectivity um, uh, offering. And customers can use a variety of carriers, uh, carriers of their choice. It can be Telstra, it can be HGC, it can be PCCW. Whoever is connected to us, the carrier can use it to connect these various assets I spoke about um, and make it, you know, and, and have, a, have a, a, a cluster that he can manage uh, uh, through 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 SDN connectivity, um, so then how does he do this? So then we come to the third key. The third key is what we call the the BDX single pane. One portal, the customer goes on the portal, and now these data centers that have been connected over the federated SDN, protected by the BDX armor, he can go and manage them. He can decide I want this rack in uh, Hong Kong to connect to my racks in Nanjing or to Singapore, or I want to connect them to Global Switch in Amsterdam. And he can do that with a click from the SDN portal. And, and this is, how, sorry, from the BDX portal. And this is how we, we, we help the customer on his transform and, 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 become, and, and become more, um, you know, his hybrid solutions are now, he's not just looking at one rack, he's looking at racks, he's looking at the cloud, he's looking at third party racks, and he's connecting to all of them. So with all of that, you have your offerings, you have, and, and I love that, the three keys, it's so clear, um, you know, your value proposition uh, to your uh, your clients and, and to the industry, and, and you've, already been expanding so quickly. I mean, we're only, you know, a third of the way through the year. What does the rest of the year look like uh, for BDX? So, Barb, you've forgotten, and we also forget many times that we're barely a year old, right? Mm -hmm. So we are, uh, so we've been scrambling to set up a global platform and doing acquisitions at the same time and building a data center in Nanjing at the same time. How the guys have done it, I have no idea. I, honestly, I, I just sit back and I look at them and I say, wow, uh, it, it's been quite, a, you know, I mean, I mean, in barely six months. Um, now for the rest of this year, uh, I guess what you're going to see is Nanjing go live and you're going to see 
a couple of more acquisitions coming in uh, in Asia. Uh, hopefully India, hopefully Indonesia, hopefully Tokyo, let's see. So that's where the focus is in terms of uh, how the year is going to end. If I can end this year with, a, with, with you know, two more acquisitions along with the current six data centers we have uh, connected back to uh, a global platform and functioning seamlessly, I'll be a happy guy. Yeah, well, amazing. It's so fun to watch, so great to be. Um, part of this with you, we feel like we are, <laughs> and you are, and, you are, you are. Yeah, we look forward to to hearing the 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 next and the latest, and and uh, being here to to celebrate it with you. So thank you, thank you for joining us, uh, and thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Thanks, Barb. Thank Peace. you.